The Business Bully Podcast is being brought to you by Audible with over 180,000 different titles for you to choose from, including the best-selling book written by yours truly, Pitch Close, Upsell, Repeat, available next month on Audible. It has everything that you need, so you get there right now, audibletrial.com forward slash bully. That's audibletrial.com forward slash bully. Now let's go ahead and make this thing happen. He's been an award-winning media personality and producer. As a speaker, he's empowered over 1 million people from the stage. Now, one of the leading brand experts and business coaches in the U.S. is bringing his unique brand of straight talk to the world of on-demand audio. It's the Business Bully Podcast. Now, here's the business bully himself, David Anderson. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, what up, what up, what up, what up, what up, what up? The Mohawk and Real Talk and Living Fully Business Bully Dave Anderson is back on the block, people. Hot show today, real hot show. But before we get into everything I have going on, I need y'all to seriously take a little time and subscribe, share the show. Uh, right now, we've got five-star reviews on, on Amazon. We've got them on Stitcher. We've got them on uh, you know the Apple Podcast platform. Wherever you get your podcast, if you leave a five-star review, I will read it on the air. So you can tell me I'm a fat ass and go screw myself. I'm going to read just that. Hey, Dave, you're a fat ass. Go screw yourself just because I... I want five star ratings across the board. It helps me out. It makes you feel good. Whoopity damn do. Let's get this thing popping. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I have had a very interesting week. As you know, um, Donald Trump is now officially the 45th president of these yet to be United States. And what does that mean? Well, what that means is, um, nothing. <laughs> he's the president and he's doing what he wants to do, as most presidents do. People are concerned, but my whole thing is if you're concerned, you need to be taking some action and, and doing something. Uh, one person who felt as though she was doing something was Chrisette Michelle, and I'm going to be speaking to her later on in the show. She has a lot of things to say regarding um, the inauguration and how people have treated her, especially people who uh, look like her. So we're definitely going to be um, talking to her regarding her feelings about just the backlash she's gotten, uh, what she's experienced, if she has heard uh, a lot of the stuff that she's hearing online or, or, or the memes or any of that kind of good stuff, um, the interviews that she's done so far. And y'all know good and well, I'm going to ask her some real questions. Why? Because I'm getting questions directly from you that have been submitted uh, through All Hip Hop, that have been submitted through Facebook.com forward slash The Business Bully. And of course, on my Twitter uh, at DA Business Bully. Um, so... I have to let you know what happened to me regarding this whole Chrisette Michelle uh, situation. If you follow me on Instagram, which is also the business bully, you'll know that I posted a picture of Spike Lee standing next to Melania and Donald Trump. This was because Spike Lee took it upon himself to insert himself in the conversation, talking about how he was thinking about using one of Chrisette Michelle's songs for his She's Gotta Have It TV show on Netflix, which I didn't know a damn thing about until such time as he made this announcement. And he said, well, I'm not going to do that now. And I'm thinking to myself, OK, cool. But what, 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 what what's your point, Spike? You know, and when I found this, uh, when I found this picture, it was from 2013 and it was Spike Lee you know, cozied up next to um, the man who would eventually become president. And there were a whole bunch of people on Instagram who said, oh, well, Dave, you have to understand that was before Trump decided to run for office. And my response to them uh, was the same thing that I said to Spike Lee when Spike Lee decided to jump on my timeline and got mad that I posted a picture that was public domain. And basically what I said, matter of fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read you exactly what I said to Spike Lee and all the rest of these morons. What I said um, pretty much was this. At official Spike Lee, so you're saying because you took this picture in March of 2013 that you weren't aware of Trump and his disrespectful practices towards people who look like you? Aren't you from New York City? Don't you remember how he bigged up Omarosa and disrespected Randall Pinkett? For those of you who don't know who Randall Pinkett is, Randall Pinkett is the only black winner of The Apprentice. Before there was a celebrity apprentice, there was an apprentice. And uh, Randall Pinkett became the apprentice and he beat out a blonde haired, blue eyed white girl. And Donald Trump said on the day that uh, the guy became the apprentice, well, why don't we give her a job, too? And you guys can be co-apprentices. And Randall Pinkett looked at him dead in his eye and said, no, it's not called the apprentice. It's called the apprentice. I want it fair and square. 
You know, so he tried to play. He tried to play him because he was a black man. He then went on to call him lazy and all other kinds of stuff. So then I said, you don't remember uh, Donald Trump's vitriol towards the innocent Central Park Five before you cuddled up and took that picture? Did you even have a conversation with Chrisette Michelle before you pulled the plug on her? You do realize that is the definition of hypocrisy, right? What happened to pulling someone to the side instead of making grandiose hypocritical gestures? Or is the man who made Malcolm X and do the right thing gone for good? And I stand by that because here's the thing. If you are 60 years old, which Spike has got to be damn near 60 years old by now, um, you know the kind of hatred Donald Trump has when it comes to black people and, of course, uh, the hatred that he has towards women um, simply because of those things. And let's not forget the federal government sued Donald Trump for uh, unfair housing practices towards black people in America. So... Yeah, y'all can miss me with the, oh, it was before he ran for president, as if he became a suspected white uh, supremacist when he decided to run for office. Like, he just woke up one day and said, you know what? All this being fair and nice, I'm going to stop that. I'm just going to, you know, be a complete asshole now. Like, no, that that's not it. So if you're going to come at Chris Sutton's show, you might need to look in your mirror. And, you know, I, I stand by that. A couple other things I do want to let you know. I am filling up my calendar for appearances and for lectures. So if you're at a college or a university, if you um, have an organization that you want me to come through, uh, we could definitely make that happen. My team is filling up the calendar as we speak. Um, you can send an email uh, right now to info at innerbrand.org. That's info. I-N-F-O at inner, I-N-N-E-R, brand, B-R-A-N-D, dot O-R-G. And uh, you just put in the subject line, um, business bully, and we'll go ahead and see what we can work out. And uh, we'll make it happen because I'm definitely getting out in these streets in 2017, man. I didn't do a whole lot of speaking in 2016. I did some, but I didn't do um, nearly enough because I was spending so much time doing uh, press and things to support the book. Um, also, if you are in Philadelphia, I'm actually going to be speaking at a summit in April, I believe the first day of April, if I'm not mistaken, and I will be putting those details up on uh, businessbullyshow.com. Uh, and as dates come up, you'll see that I'll have a calendar up and it's going to be an amazing event. But if you want to get, uh, if you want to get tickets to that event, um, you can go to strictlybusinessnetwork.com and uh, get those early bird tickets to come see me do this sales and marketing thing um, live and in person, rich, rugged, rough, and, and uh, raw, you know, business bully style. So I'm excited about that. Now, before we get to that, th there is one other thing that I do want to talk about, and I'm happy to have uh, the guests that I have at this time um, to talk about this. Um, a couple a couple of months ago, there was a girl um, named uh, Nikki Hauser. And Nikki Hauser went uh, to a Victoria's Secret where allegedly some black woman robbed Victoria's Secret. And so the manager ignorantly kicked all the black people out of Victoria's Secret. And if you know, like I know, um, a lot of those things um, that are in Victoria's Secret are not necessarily made for black women and aren't necessarily made for full figure black women. But most importantly, a lot of times we support things and pay for things for people who don't respect our dollars. And when you are... In a situation to do something, you ought to be able to do something, which, um, you know, is the point of the guest that I have on right now. This uh, this young lady actually owns one of the biggest black owned um, plus size lingerie businesses on the planet. Uh, it's called Kelly's Closet dot net. And she also has Kelly's Toy Box, which is just what it sounds like. Yes, sexy toys and all that good stuff, vibrators and, and hips, whips, change dips, all that kind of crazy stuff. She's got all of that. And, you know, I wanted to, you know, talk to her about the importance of making sure that people know that there is an alternative to Victoria's Secret for black women by a black woman. So I'm happy to uh, happy to have her on the show. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Kelly Thomas. Hi, Dave. How, How are everybody? you, everybody? Hi. I'm good. Good. Well, thank you for agreeing to do the show. It definitely it definitely means a lot. Um, can you talk to me really quickly about how you got started in in, in the lingerie business, especially uh, you know, plus size lingerie for for, uh, for uh, black women? Definitely. So I, I'm plus size. Let's start off with that one. Mm -hmm. So I'm not skinny, trying to dress plus size girls. I'm plus size, and I got frustrated with poor quality, poor color choices, 
just poor item selection and sizing out of stores and, you know, just frustration. And I figured there had to be a better way. And if there couldn't be a better way, let me create that better way. And that's where it all started. So for you, um, when you saw, did you see the uh, the situation um, with Nikki Hauser online with, with being kicked out of Victoria's Secret? And if you did, what, 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 what were your thoughts? Well, I, I definitely did see it. Um, I'm so sorry that that happened to her. I'm so sorry for anybody who ever gets kicked out of a, of a lingerie store. Um, everybody who welcome in Kelly's closet, though. So feel free to come and shop here. I have your size. That's guaranteed. <laughs> All right. So are there limits to like what sizes um, you have and what, um, you know, what people should be uh, getting? Uh, no, I carry a size small to a 4X, which is usually like a 0 to a 22, 24. Mm-hmm. Um, some of my largest competitors only go up to uh, extra large, maybe a 14. And just quality. After a few washes, if your stuff falls apart, you should probably stop shopping at those places. So what I hear you saying is people continue to buy stuff that doesn't have the quality. Why in the world do they continue to buy it? I don't understand. I think it's just what they know. People get comfortable. People get comfortable with names. People get comfortable knowing, you know, that it exists. Um, One of the hardest things I've I've run into is making sure people always know that I'm around. Mm. And... While I I feel like I have a, you know, pretty decent name and definitely a decent selection, you don't have to go to a place that makes you feel bad about your size. You don't have to go to a place that makes you pay more for bad quality. If your bras break up in a washing machine, you should probably stop buying bras from where you're buying. Damn. that that, See, I I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't wear bras. I'm all natural. You know what I'm saying? Well, that, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm a dude, you know what I mean? But I'm, I'm, I'm plus size. I just, you know, I don't, I don't wear lingerie either, but I, I feel like it's important. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, let's not, let's not play ourselves short here. It's not like you're not doing five figures a month. It's not like people don't know who you are, but what you're saying is it's more about getting that awareness out because of incidents like what happened with, with Miss Hauser. Definitely. Definitely. You know that, you know, I'm here. You don't have to shop there. I welcome you. Open arms. Now, what complaints have you received um, regarding your merchandise and the things that that you sell online? There is this industry standard of cup sizes. And sometimes the industry doesn't always realize that when you go up a size, you go up a breast size also. And, you know, it's it's making sure that the, the cover lingerie makers I deal with understand that that's that's part of what the clientele needs. It's part of what happens when you are a little bit larger. You have a little bit more cushion for the pushing. Mm-mm. That you need extra space in every place. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes not just around, you know, hips and belly area. Sometimes you need a little extra room and breast. So, so mm. it's those things. But I do carry lingerie that, go up to, that goes up to an H cup also. Damn. I'm sorry. So, that's unprofessional. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Dave, an H cup. They exist. But they buy them a row one, I got them. Wow. Like, I ain't even know. Like, damn. Let I me mean, hold on one second. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. Damn, you on the eighth letter of the alphabet? Yes. Oh, and wait a minute. There are double letters in there. So once you get to D, you got D, double D, triple D. Some places you have E's, you have S. Mm. They double. <laughs> Yo. But that's... yes. Breasts come in many sizes, and you know, a lot of the times, women wear the wrong size. Yo, so how does all right? So how do you, especially because you know your, your business is primarily based online, how do you make sure that people have the right sizes? Like, how, how does a woman know that she has the right size if all she's been told all her life is that she's a C cup or whatever? Like, how do y'all differentiate? I'm just trying to find out. I need all the information I can get. <laughs> Well, we try to give out, you know, some education as possible. We're always available to help with sizing. Um, if you have your bra, your breast is filling over the top of your bra, or underneath to the bottom, your bra does not fit. It's not up for debate. Wow. It's just like a pair of good jeans. When you put them on, if you got to lay down to button them, you need this next size. <laughs> You're getting a little thickums there, ain't you? If you got to lay down. <laughs> that's, that's, the, that's the moment where you realize that you, your, your gut needs to surrender. Like, you, if you lay it down and you still try to just give up, because when you lay down, you already in a position of, of submission. You might as well just submit, tap out, and realize. Uh, you need... <laughs> <laughs> well, 
whatever you gotta do to make it work. I'm saying jumping up and down, it just doesn't happen to work the same for breasts. They won't magically fall in a cup. Right. <laughs> now, now, in all seriousness, one thing that I love about your business model is that there are celebrities that don't have the amount of followers you have on Instagram. You have over 150,000, approaching 160,000 people following you on Instagram. How did you get to that number? We've chosen to do a lot of work with um, bloggers, and we've gotten shout-outs from several celebrities and several high-profile pages. And we just, you know, continue to, to push our model, to push that, you know, you can be sexy at any size. And it doesn't matter if you were 2 or 22. We love you. Everybody's welcome. Heck yeah, because let me tell you something. I ain't mad. But um, let, talk about let's talk about some of the celebrities who have um been Kelly's closet supporters, man. Let let you know what I'm saying. Let let folks know because a lot of people don't realize that they can get endorsements if they have great products. So um, can you you know let people know who who you've had support your brand? Oh sure. Um, we've done some work with um Bree Westbrook from the Westbrooks. They had a show on BET, all of the sisters together. Mm -hmm. um, we've also done some work with Charmaine um, Johnsey from Black in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And a few bloggers. Also, um, Mia the Boss from North Carolina, who is a wonderful fashion blogger. Um, we've done some work with... Um, bloggers from Florida and you know really bloggers help you sometimes more than and it's not just as much as celebrity because you see something on them that you like they're actually reachable where a celebrity may not respond so you know they're able to give you fit tips that maybe I wasn't able to give you or maybe you you think that because I sell it that I'm biased I mean I am because I love my product but I'm, I'm a testimony to my product because I can't sell you what I don't wear which means a man shouldn't sell you lingerie but, you know, that's neither here nor there. Yeah, that's true. Now, I, mean, I, I ain't selling no lingerie to no damn body because I know that ain't my lane. <laughs> hey, I mean, look, you stay in your lane. I know mine. <laughs> um, so, as, you know, as far as that, it's, it's that we want, we want to build a relationship with, with not only our followers, but just, you know, everybody that's out there because everybody wants to feel good about what they have on. Whether it's clothes or underwear, you want to feel good about it. You know, you hate getting down to that last wash day and you look and you see what you have left and you're like, no, let me be that alternative for you. Word. Now, um, so from a business standpoint, you feel like the bloggers and, and getting um, getting with bloggers is just as important to grow your, your following, your fan base as it is to get uh, celebrity endorsements. I do. I do. Bloggers are definitely a trusted source. And you have to think about it. Everybody won't follow your favorite celebrity. And you also have to kind of want to target your market. So I wouldn't go to a skinny celebrity to promote plus-size lingerie. It just doesn't work. Mm -hmm. um, also, sometimes people assume that, you know, just automatically assume that celebrities are purchasing their out of their price range. Mm. And that's not true here. We make clothes for everyday people. Yeah, for real. I, I mean, I, I think that that's important. Um, what other... Okay, so I want to get into a sp expansion in a, in a second, but I also want to talk about... Um, so say that um, I'm a young lady and I want to start you know, an online shop because it seems like that every, every other girl in the world is sitting up here thinking that they're just going to get a Shopify shop and up and quit their job and make five figures a month. Like Kelly Thomas, you know, like what is, you know, like what, if you had to start all over again, knowing now, you know, um, like knowing, knowing then what you know now, what would you do? Like step by step. Step by step. Okay. Well, let's see. I mean, first, Handle your business. Make sure your licenses and your registration is correct. Your, bu your business needs to handle business, <laughs> you know, and be prepared to do that. Make sure that, you know, your name is set up. You've trademarked what you need to trademark. You have your tax ID. You know, before you, you do anything, you also need to know your industry. Mm -hmm. So I can't just turn around and just because I'm plus size say, let me go ahead and sell bras. No, that's not the only thing. I mean, now, of course, I love lingerie and I, you know, built my frustration, but it took me two years of research also, you know, in my industry to determine if this is even a worthy business. Mm. 
So I say, one, know your industry. Know your peaks. Know your seasons. And if, if you have the time, push your time um, before you jump into it and before you buy a bulk load of product that you're just holding because nobody wants. Mm. Wow. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, the cool thing about you and, and the one thing that I like about you, um, having known you, um, is that you are um, always looking for the next thing. You're, you're never satisfied. Um, you and I will get into long, drawn out debates as to whether or not you need to open a brick and mortar store. <laughs> And I'm, you know, I'm so against brick and mortar because I feel like you're just taking your profits and just pissing them down the toilet. But that's just the fight we're going to have as long as, as you and I, you know, know each other. But <laughs> you you still are not satisfied with where you are. And then you went and took, you know, some of the profits from Kelly's Closet and then started Kelly's Toy Box, you know, in an industry that's cr- everybody and their mama got a vibrator. You know what I'm saying? But you're selling everything. And then, like, what made you think that you were going to be successful in a bedroom candy, Adam and Eve, Spencer's Gifts kind of world when it came to sex toys? Because it's hard to find everything in one place. Hmm. It, it, you, know, you know, you can have a good sex toy and you can have it in one location. But not often can I find several different famous maker sex toys in the same place. I bring that to you. So not only do I bring that to you, but I bring your regular everyday undergarments. I can bring your I am the sexiest beast on the planet lingerie. I can also bring you toys for, you know, for you to start playing that toy box. So what it is, was it was being able to offer the total package, knowing that you don't have to go anywhere else. Mm. You don't need to go to Adam and Eve. I got it. Mm. Yeah, so, um, wow. Yeah, I mean... You getting it done? I ain't mad at you, sis. You know what I'm saying. So, um, where can folks, you know, where can folks find you? How can they reach you? Where can they purchase your stuff? All that good stuff. Let them know. All right. Well, you can find me online at my website www. Kelly's Closet Closet with a K. Net. You can also find me on social media on Facebook is Kelly's Closet, also still with a K, and on Instagram, where I'm always at, it's Kelly's Closet with a K, spell the dot out and net. So Kelly's Closet dot net on Instagram. Word, word. So everybody, make sure that you uh you go right now and, and and get your thongs and your whips and your handcuffs with the fur on them and um, blindfolds, gags, you know, vibrators and um you know um, halter tops and and you know nasty stuff that you know respectable people ain't going to do publicly but having they having a trunk everybody got a trunk in their in their closet don't even lie y'all got trunks in your closet <laughs> you know what i'm saying especially you know when you got That's kids right. and we you know there you go yeah when you got kids you know when them kids go away you be like pop that trunk <laughs> <laughs> you know you pop that trunk so you can pop something else that's all i'm saying that's all i'm saying Woo! Well, Kelly, thank you so much. Hold on, everybody. I'll be right back uh, with Chrisette Michelle right here on the Business Bully Podcast. Yo, what up? It is Dave Anderson, the Business Bully. Check it out. I am actually coming to Philadelphia April 1st. It is going to be an amazing event. I want you to come through because let me tell you something. You are not going to want to miss this. I am going in, people. Woo! It's the 2017 Philadelphia Sales, Marketing, and Technology Tour. I am the keynote speaker. I am going to be giving you this work. Business tips, things that you can actually use to take your brand, your business, your sales strategies to the next level. Early bird tickets right now can be purchased at strictlybusinessnetwork.com. Do not miss this. Strictlybusinessnetwork.com. Text Business Bully to 31996 for early bird specials and bonuses. Again, strictlybusinessnetwork.com. The 2017 Philadelphia Sales Marketing and Technology Tour. Be there. He's one of the leading business coaches and branding experts in the U.S., generating millions of dollars for brands like Nutrisystem, The Ricky Smiley Morning Show, iHeart Media, and Les Brown. He's impacted over one million people from the stage. Now, best-selling author David Anderson releases his latest book, Pitch, Close, Upsell, Repeat, a practical guide to sales dominance. Learn how to conquer fear of selling, how to get people to buy from you, and more. This book 
network will motivate and inspire you to unleash the sales beast inside of you. Pitch, close, upsell, repeat by David Anderson is available at Barnes & Noble, Amazon.com or wherever fine books are sold. It's time for another Business Bully interview. Ladies and gentlemen, my guest at this time needs no introduction. She is an international recording sensation. She is music personified in a lot of ways, and she has taken more heat than anybody in the kitchen during this entire political electoral process. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for Chrisette Michelle. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> yes. Yes. So happy to have you here. L- listen, first and I'm foremost. So glad to be. Thank you. Sure. Um, I wanted to know for for you, in your own words, mm-hmm. two things. First, um, did you understand that when you took the inaugural um, concert gig that you were going to get this level of backlash from people who support you and people who don't support you who just want to jump on the bandwagon? At the end of the day, you know, Trump is really receiving the backlash. Um, I'm just a dart near him. You know what I mean? So I'm mm-hmm. kind of uh, catching all the extra bullets that, uh, you know, he's not catching. And whether that be from, you know, African Americans, Africans, uh, Black Americans, Puerto Ricans, whatever minority it is, um, you know, there's no way to dodge a bullet when you're standing uh, next to uh, someone like that. Um, for me, uh, you know, love covers me. So, you know, I can't feel hate as, as deeply as, I, as I'm feeling the love. And, and that's the only thing that I can do is, is let it bounce off and contain to, to radiate and, and emanate who God is. With that being said, sure. I have my own particular theories and um, I got into it online with Spike Lee regarding you um, mm. because my whole thing is this. You have people Mm -hmm. who are entertainers. We're all entertainers. Some of us are socially conscious. Some of us are not. Um, Mm -hmm. But it, to me, is kind of hypocritical to call someone out for doing something that you did, too. Meaning in 2013, you sat there and took a picture with this man. But you grew up Mm -hmm. in New York. You knew what he did with the Central Park Five, spent $85,000 of his own money, you know, Mm -hmm. to try and get innocent people killed. He um, he treated Randall Pinkett, the only black winner of The Apprentice, um, as if he was less than and had to share his honor, uh, wanted him to share his honor with a white woman. But yet and still, mm-hmm. you took a picture with him. But now you're condemning someone you never had a conversation with, um, yeah. you know, and from what I understand, is this true that he never actually approached you or your team about using your song? No, you know, I've been I've been working really hard lately and kind of on the road. So I kind of miss a lot of pop culture. So I didn't know that he had a television show on Netflix. So that was just, you know, something that was um, made to my attention uh, when he said he would be using my music. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, so no, I, I didn't know uh, anything about a TV show. Um, and that's okay. He doesn't have to use use my song. What I think made me uh, the most disappointed is that he's the art who came before me. And so he's supposed to give me the paintbrush. You know what I mean? I'm waiting for the baton from Spike Lee. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, I wasn't necessarily upset with his words because, like I said, I understand that people are upset in general. And they're going to spew venom wherever it will stick. Um, but, you know, what 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 is most disappointing is that, you know, you created Brooklyn, you created the spike joints and, and that, that I watched and that I was inspired by. And so when I bring Basquiat to the inaugural ball, you don't even know what art looks like anymore. And that's, you know, where the disappointment lies for me. Right. Um, when it comes to um because i want to address everything you know this idea that you know because you know you're doing rich hipster and and, and you're on your own that chrisette Mm -hmm. michelle is somehow desperate for money you know um and Mm -hmm. is that i don't don't, don't mind i don't mind no i don't mind people thinking that either um you know people black people um are not one category you Mm -hmm. know what i mean we we uh, act like we're this one lump of, of stone that all think the same and mm-hmm. uh, all, you know, believe the same. Uh, so, you know, when I do a show that's sold out uh, around the country, you know, there are 3,000 people in each, you know, mm-hmm. theater. But that means that there are um, still a few million people that didn't come to that show. Mm-hmm. You know, so this black business just 
put together a 32 city tour Mm -hmm. with her own money. And this small black business uh, just got out of a 33 city tour. And this small black business just got a record label signed to Capitol Records. And this small black business uh, is wondering how she's going to avoid 60% of her income to taxes. So, you know, if you don't know what a small black business looks like, that's on you. You don't have to support me. But this small black business is getting her makeup done by BT at the Red Rooster in Harlem. You don't need there. Right. <laughs> Real rap. Now, um, a lot of people, for example, criticize Steve Harvey because, and I did too, not because he had the photo op with Donald Trump, not because he met with Donald Trump, but the optics of what that looks like, especially mm-hmm. when you don't come out of that meeting with him doing anything but using you as a prop and saying, hey, everybody knows Steve Harvey, but you didn't say, hey, you know, I told him I expect this, I want that. This, that, and a third. Having said that, did you A, mm-hmm. speak with the president? And B, if you did, mm-hmm. what did you say to him? Sure. No, I didn't shake the president's hand. Uh, at the end of the day, this is not about a handshake. This mm-hmm. is about uh, unifying our people. And when I say our, I don't mean just people who look like me. I just mean America. Uh, we're a divided place right now. Nobody knows what the person next to him thinks. Because 40% of America did vote for Donald Trump. So there are... Four out of every 10 people that I pass who voted that I don't understand. Do you Mm -hmm. know what I mean? And so I need an explanation from all of them and I need them to know who they're looking at. At this point, like, I feel kind of bad because it's just like, I don't want you to ever feel in a place where you have to explain yourself or justify yourself, you know, but, you know. And and I don't. Okay. You know, so don't even, yeah, don't worry. Okay. Um, You know, so you have this, you have this new project uh, coming out, you know, Mm -hmm. um, and you know you're getting uh, you're getting a lot of publicity for it, and for me that's great because I feel like more people need to know you know how wonderful you are and the kind of art that you put out. Um, Thank you. But do you feel as a black woman that you're getting the? And I know you don't necessarily. Do I feel, feel like as a black woman that I can't say what Meryl Streep says without receiving backlash? Yes. Yeah. So I feel like as a black woman, if I don't stand at the pussy rides next to Scarlett Johansson and say the same thing she's saying, that I might be able to dodge the bullet. Yeah. I do. I do. I feel like we we marginalize ourselves. Uh, black women are allowed to speak out against or about black injustice on a white stage. And that doesn't make any sense. Who are we talking to if we're talking about injustice? We're not talking to our own people, are we? Are we unjust against ourselves? You, you do the math there. Right. You know, um, we're pulling ourselves down when we finally get the chance to talk. We really are. Yeah, yeah. we really are. And and that has to stop. I, I never understood for the life of me why 98 percent of black people just vote one way based on tradition and not on platform or education. When you look at the LGBTQ community, when you look at the Hispanic community, they have representation on both sides of the aisle. And even if you don't have representation on both sides of the aisle, there are super PACs put in place. There are plans put in place. But when it comes to us, it's just like if we're not singing and, and I'm not saying singing to you, I'm talking about in in like a march type of situation or some yeah. kind of you know um feel good rally you know that goes along with the yeah. news cycle nothing gets done you know so yeah. for you Christelle- i don't think we're reading enough material i don't mm-hmm. think we know what's really going on i don't think we know what it means to be democratic or a democrat or a republican i i really am enjoying reading uh, two books right now uh one is called the black elephant in the room which is what it looks like to be um, a democrat or a republican in, in the black community and then the other one is a world in disarray where we got to take a look at the history and what's really being set up right now by donald trump and, and pay attention to 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 what the real facts are. We're more obsessed with the comb over than Congress. And, and that's, I don't know if that's safe. I don't know if that's healthy for, for the future. Mm. Now, have you seen uh, one of these tweets that Donald Trump just put out regarding uh, Chicago and um, him going to send the feds in there, you know, um, regarding when Washington? we were in, yeah, when we were in Washington, DC and, you know, I've, I've been making reference to this for a few uh, days in interviews First of all, they spent, I think, well, you, you might know the number better than me, something like $150 million on the inauguration. Yep. And so there were literally military tanks outside in the streets, like, wow. you know, with those big, you know, the I don't know the name of all the different types, but the one that you have to hold with two hands that you only see in movies. 
<laughs> yeah. um, I mean, there were there were there were men in in fatigue with rifles on the corners. Like this was my Washington D.C. place that I can take a quick train ride to and you know go eat at my favorite restaurant. This was my D.C. Right. So I think we were talking about martial law becoming effective uh, months and months ago in, in the beginning of uh, many of the protests against br- police brutality. Um, so it doesn't surprise me. It's it's very scary, but it doesn't surprise me. Mm. Um, so in your mind, what is the solution to combat systematic white supremacy, not just Donald Trump, but just so that uh, black people and people who are disenfranchised can kind of move forward? You can call me naive, but I think it begins with conversation. Um, I think it begins with conversation like this. Um, I think it begins with making an uproar on a stage you don't belong on to get people to realize that there are people like you and I talking. Um, You know, I went to the the gym the other day and, you know, a white woman walked up to me and said, I read your blog and it was very inspirational. And, you know, in the back of my mind, I'm saying, you read my blog. But she wouldn't have known who I was if I wasn't on that stage. And now she's reading a poem uh, called No Political Genius. So I think, you know, it starts with conversation and not being afraid of of conversation with everybody um you know there is that white girl in south dakota with the baby and she's on welfare who has the same struggle as the black girl in far rockaway with the baby on welfare and if they don't have a conversation then they're not going to realize how much they have alike and and they're not going to be able to reach the same people to make the same kind of noise Amen. And there's a whole lot more white women on welfare in South you Dakota than there are. You know you what I mean? Lying. You ain't lying. <laughs> you know, but that's the that's the optics. Yeah, we need to yeah, talk so, about that. Yeah. So what I what I'm doing with the T V show No Political Genius is I am sitting with both of those people and then finding the people who have the answers for both of those people. And just beginning the conversation with all three now of those people and seeing if we could sort of start getting our heads together to make some some changes and to answer some questions. Because do you know the answer? The answer is not in not being present in your seat as a Democrat. If we if we don't, will you promise to be in your seat? You know what I mean? Representing me. Right. Otherwise, I have to. And, And look what happens when I stand up. Right. You know, and, and that's what pisses me off. Like, if if you had a penis, I don't think that this would be as much of an issue. A penis you know? was standing right next to me and he's not receiving half the backlash at all. Like people, most people don't even know his name. It's all Chrisette Michelle, Chrisette Michelle, Chrisette Michelle, Chrisette Michelle, which is great as far as exposure. And this is what I've said to people like y'all don't understand, like. Y'all wasn't screaming all this for Chrisette Michelle. And if y'all were that concerned with Chrisette Michelle and y'all were these huge fans and Chrisette Michelle would have gone triple platinum. Like y'all can miss me right. with that. And then my yeah, other thing we is we this. Support. We don't. And then here's the thing, right? Um, do I like, you know, your your first two albums better than I like the last one? Yeah, honestly. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. know, but then mm-hmm. did I buy every last one of them? Absolutely. You want to know why? You know, when I was doing radio and I was doing pop versus when I was doing um, hip hop and R&B, I would notice that when NSYNC came out with an album, mom would buy one for her, for dad, mm-hmm. for Becky and Billy and Jim. You know, mm-hmm. we we buy one and the whole hood dubs it, you know what I'm saying? Right. Or it gets uploaded. And so the game is different. But even aside from that, the Rolling Stones ain't had a hit in 25 years. And they're on, you know, uh, going and going and going. Stadiums. It's, we don't it's do strange. that. And then we, we talk about people falling off. We don't hold our people up. Sting ain't put out a hot album since he sang Roxanne. But still. Right. And with the exception right. of Prince, hell, they did it to Michael. And Michael had the greatest selling album of all time. So when you look at yeah. our responsibility in this, how can you just throw it all? Oh, well, I ain't like Chrisette's album, so I'm not going to support it. Like, I mean, do you see how you're fighting against your own interests? Absolutely. And then the other thing is, is you know, I don't think that people are paying attention to black success. So they don't they don't even know when there's a black person next to them that is successful. And if they do, they're definitely not, you know, being mentored by them. They're definitely not uh, receiving advice from them. So, you know, there are black I'm mentoring kids right now through an uh, online university, but that'll never make the news. Uh, so, you know, I don't I don't know that we're interested in uh, being excited if someone's doing well. I'm obviously doing something right, though. Do you know what I mean? And 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 don't be dismayed. I'm not disenfranchised. I'm not. Um, I don't feel defeated. Uh, my favorite Maya Angelou quote right now, of course, is just because we encounter defeat doesn't mean we have to become defeat. So I don't have to be what people are calling me. I was I was called before 
I got that fateful call, phone call and I'm, I'm called after. Uh, I haven't changed. I'm still the same person. I still have the same beliefs. And whether you bought, you know, my, my album before that or you buy or pick up No Political Genius after that, um, I'll still be Chrisette Michelle. So nothing that anybody's calling me is going to change me uh, or make me feel any different about uh, who I am. And the truth of the matter is, is we've been calling each other bitches and hoes uh, in hip hop for a really long time. So I'm borderline desensitized to those kind of words yeah. like coon. Yeah, okay. yeah, that's the other one. You a coon, but like, I mean, no one says anything. Like, no one said anything about Ray Lewis or or the fact that Jerry Rice is running around here with a chicken helmet, dancing with a butter biscuit on Popeyes commercials yeah. across the country. So, you know, no. I, I feel I feel some type of way about that. You know what I'm saying? Because I got daughters and I got a wife. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And so you don't see anybody else be it a male or female tearing each other down on the internet the way we do. You've never once seen a white person say, well, I have to, I have to disagree with you. Mm. And, and although I understand your passion, mm -hmm. I was listening to the radio the other day, mm. uh, you know, one of the AM stations and there was yeah. a white man referring to folks like Madonna and Scarlett Johansson as uh, white self hate. That's what he referred to. them. he said, these are white self haters. What? Um, they're yeah, they're ashamed because they've been born into white privilege, and they feel like they have to give that white privilege to the African American. So I think that there's a lot of divide in many different communities, and and that's mm -hmm. what no political genius is about. It's about uh, finding out what the conversation is in all different communities, and 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 calling division out for what it is, and then realizing that at the end of the day, we all want the same thing. Right. Um, and so, you know, I'm not, I'm not afraid to stand between those two types of conversation. I don't think people know what type of um, uh, fate Scarlett and, and Meryl and Madonna have to face for standing up the way that they stood up. I, I feel like we're all in this together and, and I refuse to only put a color on it. Mm -hmm. um, I can't. I can't. I have to put love on it. I have to. I have mm -hmm. to. Otherwise, I won't be optimistic. I won't be hopeful. I won't mm -hmm. believe that there's going to be peace soon. There's going to be unity soon. I have mm. to believe that. You know I have what? To. That's, what, that's what God is. I'm not even mad at that. I will tell you what, I was so happy to see little Mo stand up for you the way that she did. <laughs> and I love her. I'm actually with her sister right now. Yeah, you because know, I was like, yeah, Mosey, Mosey, get him. You know what I mean? Like, it, it, <laughs> it gets to a point where, you know, somebody has to say something and it shouldn't just, um, you know, it shouldn't just come from you. A um, couple more things and then I'm going to leave you alone. Sure. Um, sure. Quest love said mm -hmm. that he would pay you to mm -hmm. not do the gig. And you said that you would have paid him to do the gig. Anybody who has any opinion about you, who is a celebrity, have you, they, have they had a conversation with you, a text message, a tweet, a DM, anything? Yeah, totally. I spoke to Lloyd yesterday. I spoke to Maxwell earlier. Maxwell actually released a tweet too, uh, sending his love and support and, um, uh, sending out a link to, you know, the, the no political genius movement. Um, so, yeah, there's been a lot of uh, celebrity support also. Um, there's been congressmen who, who want me to come and sit down with them. Um, and there's always, you know, we're always kind of, you know, booked far in advance. But, but I'm going to be sitting down with a few of my favorite songwriters and producers to work on some music. Um, so, yeah, there's definitely uh, a lot of um, support in the celebrity world. I do understand how scary it can be to be public about um, you know, what you want to change and what you want to see fixed. It's very scary to be a trailblazer. And so I don't blame anybody for hiding. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, I've been given this brave for some reason. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and use it. Uh, what can fans do to help you, um, you know, get, get this, uh, get this movement out here that, you know, you're, you're sparking at this point. Thank you. So, you know, on the 1st of February, I'm going to release the spoken word, um, album, uh, called No Political Genius. And, you know, I'm doing stuff like I'm, I'm going to be in uh, New York Fashion Week uh, reciting poetry from the album. So there are like sort of a large brands that have decided to stand behind me and sort of be, you know, the, the supportive of, of this moment. Uh, but, you know, I have a challenge called the No Political Genius Challenge. Um, and that is for uh, everybody to take two hours out of their week. And one of those hours spend without uh, being on your phone um, watching the news. Mm -hmm. And one of those hours being spent not on your phone reading a newspaper. And then after that, writing down uh, what you think and then uh, figuring out what you can do to fix it. And if there's nothing that you can do to fix it, get behind somebody who can. Um, I think this is about getting behind somebody who can.
you know, uh, not judging how they're doing it, but getting behind somebody who can um, and pushing them to the next place. So, I mean, that's that's my challenge for all the young people listening and, 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 and all the people who um, have strength uh, that are listening to, to become active um, by being knowledgeable first and then doing some research and, and figuring out what can be done to fix stuff. Um, and that, that's basically it. I mean, I'm going to be visible as, as long as the wave allows, and I'm going to continue to uh, speak out. I'm going to speak with people who can make a difference, and I'm going to tell people's stories who are the difference that needs to be made. Um, I'm not going to stop until, until I feel like I'm out of breath. You look at folks like Maya Angelou, uh, Nikki Giovanni, yeah. you know, Nina Simone, mm-hmm. those those people, mm-hmm. you know, had platforms and were considered entertainers, but still, yeah. you know, took a lot of heat. So congratulations mm-hmm. on, on doing more than just talking. And by the way, I think it's important that people understand that this small black business also employs 35 black people, you know, to yeah. make things happen. You know, so it's not like you're just taking your money and you sitting back like Scrooge McDuck swimming in a money bin. You know, yeah, you know, and that yeah, is, I have no, I have, I have no choice. I have no choice. Yeah. I have no choice but to employ, employ us. Yeah, and, and that's by the grace of God thing. alone. Well, yeah. um, thank you so much for you know for showing up, uh, you know for this for this interview. Um, it means the world to me. It means the world to my listeners. You have my respect. Because um, I'm gonna be honest with you. I really don't like I've been wrestling back. Would I have gone? Would I not have gone? If I were to go, what would I say? You know what? I have you know a what? I'll, I'll, say, I'll say this about that. Hmm. I had as much dread um, about going as everyone else did. I was just as uncomfortable about going as everybody else was. But when my spirit jumped up and said yes before I could even think about it. I went with that because what would the point of me being on this planet be if I didn't live, you know, by this spirit that's, that, that, that I've expe- accepted into, into my heart? What, what would the point of me being here be if I did everything based on my emotions or fears? Mm. Good point. Well, Chrisette Michelle, again, thank you so very much uh, for being on the Business Bully Show. And um, I appreciate you. I support you. No Political Genius comes out in February, correct? February 1st. That's right. Thank you. February 1st. Thank you so much. I definitely appreciate it. Um, I've just got to take a peaceful stance because at the end of the day, I don't think that violence is going to be the answer. And I don't want to incite that. But I feel as um, disappointed and angry as you do. I'm just trying to choose my words uh, so that they can be repeated by people of every color. So there you have it, Rough, Rugged, and Raw, my interview with Chrisette Michelle. Um, you know, whether you agree with her, don't agree with her or not, I wanted to make sure that she had a place where she could actually answer your questions. So thanks to everybody who submitted questions. There were a lot of you. I got as many questions as I possibly could. in um, when it came to it, a lot of you had duplicate questions and you know, for me, you know, I'm a Chrisette Michelle fan. Uh, what I've done, what she did, I'm still, you know, up in the air about that, at least not that way. And I think it's important, though, that instead of just sitting in a bubble, you know, and this has always been my issue with with marching and with these types of situations where people just have candlelight vigils or wear hoodies or allow the 24 hour news cycle to dictate their feelings and their emotions and all this all other dumb stuff or focus on people trying to paint black folks out as looters, we get into the conversation, but more importantly than getting into the conversation, we get money and make things happen, get our voices heard. That's how Hispanics got uh, reform on um, border control and different things of that nature. That's how you have um, a path to citizenship. That's how the LGBTQ community got don't ask, don't tell repealed, how there's uh, it's legal for um, marriage in, in 50 states for anyone who is of the LGBTQ persuasion. Black people need to take those types of stands. And another thing, for those of you in my audience who are white and you went to the women uh, women's march and you stood in solidarity, we didn't see you at any Black Lives Matter rallies and i'm going to be honest with you some of y'all voted for trump but are acting really really scared and so it comes down to you know you may say hey we're all women but the truth of the matter is you feel that your whiteness is more important and so until you're willing to really be accountable all of the time i don't want you around 
at all in the times when we need you because you don't show up for us. That's as real as it gets. Uh, my thanks also to Kelly Thomas as well as Chrisette Michelle and her management team. Um, again, you can always, if you want to reach out to me, you have a comment, um, you can always follow me on Facebook at The Business Bully. Same thing uh, for Instagram is The Business Bully. You can follow me on Twitter at DA Business Bully, and I will check you out next time. Thanks so much for listening.